Greetings and blessings to everyone watching. Um, I just have a quick word on my heart to share with you today. Um, just something that happened this morning. Um, and this, this message is about the knowledge of God. So this morning, my, my son and myself went on a hike. We went on a walk in a nature reserve close to where we stay. Um, and this walk was a guided walk. It was, it was a walk done with a guide, a very knowledgeable guide, an expert, lots of experience. And the theme and the topic of the walk was creepy crawlies. So it was, uh, we went into the nature reserve and we looked for creepy crawlies. We were lifting up rocks and we were looking for things like scorpions and spiders and maybe even snakes, those sort of things and whatever else we could find. Um, it's the first time we've done that and it was, it was so much fun. It was awesome. But it was, it was amazing listening to the guide. Um, lots of experience, as I said, and he was sharing about his past. He was sharing about uh, where he came from, how he got into doing what he does now, um, his history. And he was sharing some stories with us that were really just amazing. And I couldn't help but, as he was sharing with us, I couldn't help but draw a parallel to our walk as Christians, the Christian life. Um, in particular, you know, one of the things he was talking about is a lack of knowledge. He was talking about people just having a lack of knowledge about all things creepy crawly. Um, in particular, all the big ones, so the snakes and the scorpions and the spiders, and people just have such a fear for these creatures just because they don't understand them and they have a lack of knowledge. And then to add to that, what then happens is people start to imagine the most amazing, incredible things. Um, of course, there's lots of movies out there and and social media and normal media platforms that don't help this at all because they paint this picture of these things and we then start to imagine the worst. And certainly because of a lack of knowledge, because we don't understand them, um, because we don't we don't know what their behavior is and why they do certain things and how to react when we do come across them. Because of that, we just fear the worst. And I think it's certainly something that is in our human nature is the unknown uh, tends to bring fear as the default. So the default reaction or response to the unknown is to initially fear until we understand, until we have a knowledge and then a knowledge of that particular thing. And then we can, we tend to relax a bit more and then we can embrace things a bit more and we can we can understand and then we and then we don't we can trust a whole lot easier so so i just i couldn't help but as he was sharing this thing because he was talking about about how people had um had shared their fears with him on many occasions and they they had imagined these snakes coming down the hill to 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 chase after them and to bite them and it's black mumbers and they've got 20 minutes to live after they get bitten by these snakes or they're in their bed at night and these spiders come in and they come and crawl on them and they bite them and um, they'll wake up in excruciating pain and be, be filled with spider poison and <laughs> all sorts of amazing stories. So as I say, all of that really is just rooted in lack of knowledge. Um, these creatures are going about their own business. They are minding their own business. They are probably out hunting for food, looking for food. Uh, looking for shelter, looking for warmth if it is cold, those sort of things. Um, and the only time we really encounter them or may have some sort of a problem is if we encroach in their space and they feel threatened and they want to defend themselves or need to defend themselves. Um, but but they certainly are not targeting us and coming after us with some sort of an agenda to kill as many human beings <laughs> as they can. Um, so I, I just found that interesting because I immediately thought about a parallel to our walk as Christians, um, our experience of God, our knowledge of God, and how a lack of knowledge of God and of his word can also cause us to imagine all sorts of amazing things that are just not true. Things that are rooted in fear that is based on a lack of knowledge or the unknown. And that, that really is something as Christians we need to just work on. We need to spend time in the Word. We need to spend time in listening to the right teachings from the right people who are teaching the right stuff in line with the Word. Um, we need to focus on, on our relationship and seek Him and seek truth. Um, and out of that will come a lot of peace and freedom 
um, and joy that is to be found as we experience his love, as we grow in the knowledge of the love of God. Um, so, you know, when I was when I was thinking these things, the scripture that came to mind immediately was Hosea 4, verses 6. Hosea 4, verses 6, that says, My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Uh, some versions say, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Um, and I went and checked out a few other versions. The, the normal amplified version of that scripture, Hosea 4, verse 6, is, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. My law where I reveal my will. So it says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge of my law. And that is where I reveal my will. That is just awesome. I mean, that, that is not just, by the way, that is not a lack of the knowledge of the law of Moses. Not at all. That is not what that is saying. The context there of my law in that scripture is, is his word, God's word. So it is people being destroyed for a lack of knowledge of God's word, his law, not the law of Moses. Okay, And it says there that it is in his law, in his word, where he reveals his will. So God's will is his word. As we grow in the knowledge of his word, we also grow in the knowledge of his will for our lives. And we grow in the knowledge of who he is and how he sees us. And who we are now as new creations in Christ Jesus. Old things truly have passed away. 2 Corinthians 5.17 All things are now new. But we need to understand now what that really means. And that is found in the word. Um, another version of the scripture is the New Living Translation, the NLT. I love the way this is put in this version. It says, My people are being destroyed because they don't know me. How amazing is that? My people are being destroyed because they don't know me. Okay, so that lack of knowledge of God opens the door to other things where fear can come, imagination comes, us falling into the traps of false doctrines and wrong teachings. Um, because we haven't gone out to seek the truth for ourselves and to grow in the knowledge of God, ourselves then we are open to the wrong sort of teachings and doctrines and then we become a tree that is that is swayed by every different wind of doctrine because our roots are not rooted and grounded in the word of God and in his love and in knowing how he sees us and in knowing the true message of the gospel what Jesus really did for us on the cross 2000 years ago um, another scripture that came to mind was Proverbs 9 so I just want to go there quickly with you. So if we go to Proverbs 9. Uh, there we go. So if we look in Proverbs 9 verses 10, I'm going to read for you out of the Amplified Classic Version. It says, The reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord is the beginning, the chief and choice part of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight and understanding. For by me, wisdom from God, your days shall be multiplied, and the years of your life shall be increased. Okay, so that scripture is saying, as we grow in wisdom and in the knowledge of the Holy One, there is insight and understanding for us, there is also that our days will be multiplied and the years of our lives shall be increased. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Um, and then I thought from there about 1 John 4, because this talks about that perfect love casts out fear. So the knowledge of God's love for us, the more that we grow in the knowledge of him, because God is love. So as we grow in the knowledge of God, we grow in the knowledge of love, the love that he has for us. That's why Ephesians talks about to know the love of God, the breadth and the width and the height and the length, to know the love of God that passes human understanding or human knowledge. So it's not just a head understanding of it, it's also an experiential, experiential knowledge to experience the love of God. Um, but to know that love is where we find everything that we need, everything. But also it's the place where fear is expelled out of doors. 
Um, so when we are, when we understand God's love and we have a knowledge of the love, then and the more and more we increase in that, the more and more fear will be expelled out of doors. Let's read that scripture. So it's one John four. I'm going to read from verse 17 in the Amplified Version. So it says, In this union and communion with him, love is brought to completion and attains perfection with us, that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, with assurance and boldness to face him, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Dread does not exist, but full-grown, complete, perfect love turns fear out of doors and expels every trace of terror for fear brings with it the thought of punishment and so he who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love is not yet grown into love's complete perfection amen so again as we grow in the knowledge of God, as, as we grow in the knowledge of his love for us, fear more and more has no place in our lives. Just like fear of the creepy crawlies, when we understand them, when we know them, um, then that fear will become less and less and less of these things. Um, so I just wanted to share this message with you. I want to end quickly with Habakkuk. So Habakkuk 2 verses 14 and Isaiah 11 verses 9 both say the same thing. And they talk about that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the seas. So that is the ultimate plan. That is God's bigger plan is to fill the earth with the knowledge of his glory as the waters cover the seas. I've shared before Water normally is, is it, it symbolizes the Holy Spirit. Um, and as the Holy Spirit goes out, as the message of the gospel goes out across the earth to the seas, the seas are often in the Bible, it refers to nations. So as the Holy Spirit works through us as God's people, more and more the knowledge of the glory will go out as we share the gospel, as we share the good news, as we share who God is, um, as we share that with people. Um, the knowledge of the glory will fill the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. That is God's ultimate plan. There is no place in that plan for end of the world, doom and gloom, doctrines or stories, end time stuff, eschatology, which is not found in the word of God. Um, those things again will bring fear, but we know that Timothy tells us that we were not given a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. In 2 Timothy, it says that. So anything that, is, that brings fear to us is not from God. Okay, so that's very important that we know that. But um, we, will, we will grow in the knowledge and we will also grow in our trust for God when we know who he is. So we cannot trust someone that we do not know. People say, trust God. And of course, that is, that's very, very important for us. But we cannot trust someone that we do not know. So the more time we spend with him and spend in his word and understand and get to know who he is, what his true nature and character is, um, that God is only good, that his plans for us are only good. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says that he knows the plans he has for us. And those plans are of peace and not of evil for us. Those plans are to prosper us and not to harm us. Plans for a hope and a future. Um, one of the versions, I think it's the NIV, says, that those plans, he has an expected end. There's an expected end for us that God has. And those plans are only good. Um, so when we know this, when we know how he sees us, when we know that um, we know that his love for us, when we know about that love, when we know who we are in Christ Jesus as new creations, our new identity in him, the more that we understand that and are, and are filled with this knowledge, then fear has to go. It has no place upon us. And then we can live in peace. We can live in the joy that God wants us to live in. And we can also share this good news with others. Others that may be fearful because of a lack of knowledge, we can help them and we can show them the scriptures. We can, we can teach them and we can share with them more and more about the knowledge of God, that they can also grow in this knowledge and be set free. Um, of anything that is trying to lead them away from God's true nature and character. 
that's it. It's a short message. I hope it's blessed you. Um, I hope this means something to you. It was on my heart. Um, may you be blessed. May you enjoy the rest of your day. And I will be back soon with another message. Amen. In Jesus' name. Bye-bye.